Got another question on the periodicity topic, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so for part A, I've just cut out the section of the periodic table that's relevant to this. So you'll notice that argon's um, atomic mass is actually greater than potassium, which comes after argon. So these two are not in order of increasing atomic mass from the first 20 elements. And then following on from that, on the next part of the question, why does the modern periodic table not arrange some elements um, in order of increasing atomic mass? It's because elements could have very different chemical properties to the other members of the group. Part B now, so the equation for the reaction between magnesium and oxygen, you can either do it like that or just double it out if you're not keen on the fraction, so it will be 2, 1, 2. For the next part it was important that you picked up on the fact that there was excess acid so you would see bubbles of gas or bubbles of hydrogen gas but it's important to say that the magnesium would disappear or you could say dissolve there if you wanted to and that's because the acid's in excess. And then for the next part one difference you might observe if strontium was reacted instead of magnesium so I've just got group 2 here so there's strontium further down the group than magnesium, so the reaction would be more vigorous or it would be faster. So moving on to this six marker where we've got to explain the difference in the melting points of magnesium and chlorine, you'll notice I've got these key statements here and I've colour coded them. You'll see why when I show you the answer. But in any question like this, you've got to talk about the structure. It does mention structure and bonding, but that's the, the only information you get really. So if you can kind of bear this in mind for all of these kinds of answers, you've got to talk about the structure of the two substances, the particles involved in the structure, the attraction between the particles, and obviously to make a sort of statement about the difference in the melting points, you need to talk about the relative strength of the attraction between the particles. So there is my answer. So it's all colour coded as per this key here. So I'll just read through it and hopefully as I'm doing that you can sort of see where I'm hitting these sort of key statements. So magnesium forms a giant metallic lattice. It's got a high melting point due to a large amount of energy needed to break the strong electrostatic attraction between the magnesium 2 plus ions and delocalized electrons. Chlorine forms a simple covalent lattice it's got a low melting point due to only a small amount of energy being needed to break the weak induced dipole or London forces between the chlorine molecules. Part D now, got to use oxidation numbers to explain why this reaction involves both oxidation and reduction. So you can see I've written up the um, oxidation numbers, the atoms whose oxidation number changes. So you can see nitrogen has gone from plus 5 to plus 4. Oxygen's gone from minus 2, still minus 2 there, but it's gone to 0 there. So we'll start with um, oxygen. Oxygen's been oxidised. Its oxidation number's increased from minus 2 to 0. Nitrogen's been reduced. Its oxidation number's decreased from plus 5 to plus 4. And then finally, the calculation. So we've got to calculate the volume of gas. So there's two gases formed in this reaction. The volume of gas in decimeters cubed obtained by the student at room temperature and pressure. So the first thing we work out is the moles of strontium nitrate mass over MR, 0.025. So the moles of gas formed at RTP is going to be 5 over 2, or 2 and a half times the moles of strontium nitrate from this ratio. 2 strontium nitrate make 4 plus 1, so 5 moles of gas. So the moles of gas produced is that many. So to turn that into a volume at RTP, we multiply by the molar gas volume in decimeters cubed, which is 24, and we get 1.50 decimeters cubed.